All right, it's 630. So people are still kind of coming in and I'm gonna to have to admit them. They're gonna pop up and ding. I think you can hear that. Um, so I'm just gonna keep admitting people, but we're gonna get started because we wanna get this over in an hour and get you guys on your way and have a good evening. So I'm Mrs. Leach. I'm the assistant principal, one of the assistant principals here at the high school, and I will be the class of 2024's uh, principal. Well, then I'm still admitting. Also, just a note, if you're if you're on and your speaker's not on mute, we can hear you. So just make sure you're on mute. Um, I can find you. I'll mute you. Okay, let's get started. So like I said, I'm Rebecca Leach. I'm one of the assistant principals here at the high school, and I'm going to be spending the next four years with you guys. Um, I think I've seen a few of you. We went to the eighth grade orientation down at the middle school, um, and a number of you came to our eighth grade orientation here last uh, January, I believe it was. Um, but it's been a long time since then, so uh, welcome tonight. Um, we're going to go over a few ground rules. So like I said, if you are not muted, please go ahead and mute your screen. You can find the mute button if you hover at the bottom. Um, a little bar, a task bar comes up, and there's going to be a speaker there. If you press on the speaker, it will mute you. So I can still hear someone, so someone's not muted. So if you can just go down, hover on that taskbar, press the, the button all the way to the left is the, is the microphone button. All right, um, a few more ground rules. Like I said, so we're gonna get muted. We're gonna spend about an hour together tonight. Um, I have a prepared presentation and at the end, we're gonna do some questions and answers. Mr. Keeley's is also on this call, so he will be joining us at the end to um, um, answer some of our questions. Um, this is my first Google presentation, so bear with me. Fingers crossed this goes well. Um, so, you know, there might be some rockiness, but bear with us. We have a lot of good information to share, so I'm going to get started. Uh, so here's what we're going to cover tonight. Oop, we went too far. Here's what we're gonna cover tonight. <laughs> um, first of all, we're gonna introduce you to the three principals. I'm of course one of them. Um, we're gonna get you to introduce you to the high school schedule um, in all of its models. Um, we're gonna have some information from each of our department chairs. They, they recorded a little video to talk about some of our unique opportunities here at the high school. We're gonna go over the clubs and activities and athletics that are offered here at the high school. Um, we do have a lot to talk about for safety and school-wide expectations and norms related to safety. Um, at the end, we're going to do, um, we have a little slide on frequently asked questions. And I'm going to show you how to sign up for in-person student tours um, and how to get your Chromebook. So that all is going to be happening tonight. But let's get started with meeting our three principals. So here I am on the right, on the left, I'm Mrs. Leach. Mr. Keeley's is with us, so I'm going to stop presenting and see if we can make this work. Um, so I'm going to stop presenting, and he's going to unmute and have a few words. That's fine. Thank you, Mrs. Leach. Um, I think everyone should be able to see and, and hear me at this point. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Heath Keeley's. I'm the principal here at Averill Park High School. Um, I want to welcome you all to the beginning of your high school careers. First, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Mrs. Leach, just so that you guys know, she's been working very hard to put this presentation together for everyone. Um, and she's done a, a lot of work to get ready for tonight. Um, as she alluded to, at the high school, we have two assistant principals. We have Mrs. Leach and Mrs. Mean. Uh, Mrs. Leach will be with you all the way through until you graduate in 2024. So she's gonna be a great resource to everyone. Um, there is no question, obviously, that the past six months has been very different and very challenging in a lot of different ways. Um, we know that our world and our nation and our community right down to the high school um, has really faced a lot of challenges. Um, we've been working really 24-7 for the past couple of months to get ready to be able to welcome everyone back to our school programs. And I'm very happy to say that I, I, I feel very confident that we're ready to have you back. The other piece that I'm very excited about is, you know, never in my 23 years of working in schools have we ever gone for literally six and a half months with schools not having students in them. 
Um, that's just not right, right, you know, in any way, shape, or form. So we are extraordinarily excited to have folks coming back and to be able to work with everybody, whether you're in our hybrid model, whether you're in our virtual model, we are excited to have students back because the bottom line is that's what we got into this business for. So we are very much looking forward to working with you. Um, there's a couple of things, really three things that I want for all the students particularly to take away from at least my portion tonight. Um, there are three really key important ideas as you head into high school. The first is I'd like for you to please remember that no matter what your past has looked like, um, as you jump into high school, this is a fresh start and it's a new beginning. So kind of look at the things that you've done in the past eight or nine years of your schooling and think about what you really liked and think about the things that you want to improve upon or do better at because the next four years is a new phase and it's a new chapter. So please take advantage of that, that opportunity to really redefine yourself and move forward in a way that might be stronger than the way that it looked before. The second thing I'd like for you to remember is that high school in a lot of ways is your last stop between like childhood and more independent living, like life beyond you know, your, your, your family's house per se. And with that said, one of the biggest things that we work on at Avril Park High School is making sure that you're not only academically prepared for life after high school, but that you're prepared really in terms of just being college, career, and life ready. Um, because when you leave us in 2024, which seems like a long time from now, but actually isn't, you're really going to need to be ready to go out into the world and face challenges independently. So we want you to be successful academically, but we also want you to be ready for life. And that means we want to help to develop skills like communication and self-direction and the ability to advocate and the ability to really get out into the world and have self-direction. Okay, And that brings us to the very last of my three points that I'd like to share tonight. And that is I'd really encourage for everybody to please make sure that you use the next four years to find the thing that you're most passionate about. Be thinking about what, what area do you want to go into? Think about what gets you up in the morning and makes you say, all right, you know, I'm excited about today. Because as you take the courses and as you explore different pathways, whatever that thing is that makes you get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm really excited about the day, that's the thing you want to really throw yourself into. That's the thing you want to make your life about because that's going to give you a successful life any way that you look at it. So please remember, number one, it's a new beginning, okay? Number two, we're not just here to make you academically prepared, which is super important. We're also here to make sure that you're prepared for life beyond the classroom. And number three, use this time to figure out what makes you tick and to find your passion, okay? So I wish you all an incredible amount of luck as you move into the next four years. And we're gonna go back to Mrs. Leach who has some wonderful information that's more practical in terms of starting high school. All right, thank you, Mrs. Leach. Thank you, Mr. Keelays. All right, we're gonna present screen again, hopefully. All right. We are back on presenting, hopefully. Um, finally, the third person that uh, administrative staff is Mrs. Mean, and she is not with us tonight, but she did prepare a little video. So let's hear from Mrs. Mean. Hi, class of 2024. I'm Mrs. Main. I'm one of the two assistant principals here at the high school. Your class principal is Mrs. Leach, but if you ever need anything, if she's busy or out of the building, feel free to stop by and see me. I'm super excited to have you come to the high school this year, and welcome to APHS. So that's the three administrators that you'll be seeing here when you get here in September. So the next thing we want to go over is um, getting to know our schedule. So I know the middle school is not a block schedule. It had been a block, but now it's not a block. So we're going to go over a block schedule and also our cohort rotation. So we're going to start with the cohort rotation. So here we have our A, A, B, B schedule. Um, and we have a few different colors. So here's how it works. Our AB rotation schedule is in the hybrid model where half of our students are coming one day and the other half are coming the second day. So the breakdown is A through K. So if your last name begins with 
A, the letters A through K, you're going to be coming on the blue numbered day. So you'll be coming on September 9th, which is the first day of school. That day will be an A day. And we can tell that it's an A day on our little screen here is because that day is light gray. The next day is for the um, cohorts um, L through Z, and they're going to come on the yellow days. So we'll notice that we have two A's in a row. So on the 9th, it's an A day, and on the 10th, it's an A day. On the 11th, the blue core will come again, and it's a, it's a darker gray. So those are our B days. So we run an A and B day schedule. So your schedule will look completely different depending on what day you're here. So when you come on an A day, you'll go to a set of classes. And when you come on a B day, you'll have a completely different set of classes. Let's look at our schedule. So, oops, sorry, people are still getting admitted. So here is our, um, our bell schedule for the 2020-21 school year. You'll see that at the front of the schedule, we've added about 20 minutes to enter students into the building. And we're going to get into a little bit the entry plan a little bit later. The expectation is that students will still come at 7.30 because that's the time that school starts. Entering after 7.30, if you're not here in our location, could mean that you're late to school. So for the first 20 minutes, we're going to get kids entered into the building, and then they're going to start on their block schedule. So you'll see um, there's blocks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on an A day, you're gonna run block one, two, three, and four. And on a B day, you would run block five, six, seven, and eight. On the side, you may, you'll notice that we have some periods. So period one, two, those are about 40 minutes of time. Those are for our half block classes. Some of those might be um, if you had an intervention, if you had a, a resource room, and our phys ed runs on a 40 minute schedule. Sometimes kids will have like a 40 minute gym and then a 40 minute study hall. It seems a little complicated, but when you get here, you'll get the hang of it. The other thing that's a little more tricky for the high school schedule is the lunch schedule. So when you get into your third block class, um, you will have lunch during that time. And the lunch will depend on what class you're in. So an entire class of students will go to lunch at the same period. And so when you get here, you'll just go to your third block class and the teacher will tell you when it's time to go to lunch and then it'll be easy. You may not have lunch on the same, so you may have A lunch on an A day and you might have a C lunch on a B day. Um, let's see. So we have a lot of classes here. We have over 30 college credit classes. We have a, a, a music and art classes and um, a huge CTE program. So typically we would have the teachers come and present at a, a freshman orientation. So I asked them all to give me a little video. So I'm gonna, we're gonna run through these and these are um, our department chairs for the most part and they're talking about things that are unique to their departments. And we're gonna start with our music department and Mrs. Christie. Hello everyone and welcome to the high school. My name is Mrs. Christie and I am here representing our music department. The music department also has Mr. Blastein, who you should have met last year, and Mrs. Griffey. Up at the high school, we continue with your three primary ensembles of having the concert choir, the concert band, and then the orchestra. There also are two additional ensembles that you can partake in during the school day, with jazz ensemble and treble choir. And these allow you to dive deeper into more challenging repertoire and really get to work on techniques and different styles um, of music. We also have a general music curriculum. This year we will be offering the fundamentals course that introduces guitar, piano, different styles. Um, and then next year we will be offering music theory. Um, at the high school, all ensembles experience a pullout lesson. That is something that for you guys happened last year only in two of the groups in our band and orchestra. Now we get to have the choir partake in that side instruction as well. Um, this allows you to really develop and evolve as a musician um, and work on techniques that are more personal and uh, custom for you and your learning needs. So we cannot wait to meet you. We cannot wait to have you. Um, enjoy the remainder of what's left of your summer, and we'll see you in September.
September, she said. <laughs> All right, let's hear from our science department, Dr. Panzanero. Hello, I'm Dr. Panzanero, and I am one of your science teachers here in the high school, and I have been asked to introduce you to our science program. Now, our science program has at its core four primary subjects. Those include earth science, biology, chemistry, and physics. And we in our department strongly encourage you to explore all four of those subjects throughout your experience here in the high school. Our department has also worked very hard at introducing multiple electives to give you an opportunity to explore science in areas that may interest you. For example, we have the human brain. We have advanced placement biology, which can provide college credit. Environmental science, the gene, another college credit bearing course, forensic science, exploring chemistry in the community, and biotechnology laboratory internship, applied physics, and two courses in sustainable horticulture. And whether you are determining the concentration of carbon dioxide that you release during respiration, or you're catching fish in the Hudson, or you're launching pumpkins in physics, or investigating a crime scene, or looking at goals in earth science, I can tell you that AP science is very much hands-on science. And we also provide you with opportunities to extend your learning beyond the classroom. For example, we participate in a citizen science program offered by the Department of Environmental Conservation, uh, where we go to the Hudson River as part of the Day in the Life in the Hudson program. And as you can see, our students here are collecting and identifying fish, they're determining the turbidity of water, and they're doing chemical analysis of the Hudson River River as well. We also can apply our science to beautifying the campus that we spend so much time on. We also provide guest speakers for you. For example, Dr. Karani, a chemistry and biological engineer from RPI, or Investigator Sharp from the Rensselaer County Sheriff's Office, or Dr. Hallamack, a research chemist at the University of Rome, as just an example of some of the ones that we have here. We also provide the opportunity to participate in the science club, which is offered after school. And in that case, you are able to explore areas of science that interest you. We also provide opportunities for you to go down to the elementary school level and introduce science to our younger children. For example, here is a senior who is working with a second grader as she teaches her uh, about chemistry. Here's an example of a student working with second graders as he explains some environmental science concepts. So what I can tell you for sure is that AP science is mad, cool, crazy science. <laughs> and we are so very much looking forward to meeting you and working with you this fall. And I can tell you that we will engage you, we will challenge you, but we will support you as you explore and learn and excel in science. Now, I know that this September is going to look different than other Septembers. And I can assure you that we've been working very hard at preparing a program that will be engaging and fun. And don't forget, we're in this together. And we can get through this together, and we can succeed together. And yes, I know. No social distancing in this picture, no masks. What's going on? We'll have to have a conversation with those friends. We'll see you soon. All right. Next on to, oops, or we moved fast. All right. Next on to our English department, and this is Mrs. Gabri.
Hello, this is Gabri. I'm one of the English teachers at the high school. Welcome. Um, I just want to give you a quick overview as to some of the opportunities that we have for you in the English department. So we have classes such as nine regents, nine honors, 10 regents, 10 honors, 11 regents, 11 AP, 12 AP, and then we have many electives. Uh, one of the electives that we offer is a is called journalism and video production, and that's a half year course. We also have public speaking, which is another half year course. And then we have um, those, cl those two classes are classes that you can be in any grade and take as an elective. But the classes that you can <coughs> elect to take as a senior are philosophy, science fiction and fantasy, detective fiction, men's literature, chiclet, Death as a Force in Nature, Literature and Cinema, History of Horror, Social Media, Auto Tech, sorry, 2, Integrated English, Construction Tech 2, Integrated English. I hope that you will find things in, the, in this that you enjoy, and I can't wait to see you. Thank you, Mrs. Gabri. All right, on to our math department, and this is Mr. Zender. Welcome to our incoming freshmen. Uh, most of you are uh, going to be joining us either in Algebra, Geometry, or Algebra 2, uh, if you're double accelerated. Uh, but we're excited for you to see our course offerings beyond that. We've recently introduced lots of new electives into our program. Uh, so we're excited for you to see those options. Uh, my name is Mr. Zender. I am the teacher leader for the math department. Uh, one question that your family might have is uh, what calculators we're going to use and what you can do about that. Uh, we're mostly using a calculator called the Texas Instruments Inspire, uh, and pretty much all models are good uh, except for one called the CAS. That is the one not to get, it's not allowed on recent exams. Uh, and this calculator is generally good for the four years in math that you're uh, at the high school. Um, we also, if a family uh, is not able to purchase a calculator, we do have calculators for in school use. Um, the last thing I want to say is make sure that you're accessing your teacher for help. Uh, if you're struggling on any topic, uh, any teacher in the math department is happy to help you. Uh, make sure to reach out to your teacher in order to make a plan for figuring out how to get help if you're struggling with any topics. We're all happy to help you. Welcome to the high school. Thank you, Mr. Zender. So take note of that calculator. I'm gonna say it again. It's the Texas Instrument Inspire. So the kids will need that for their algebra and geometry classes if we don't already have one. Um, so if you're planning on purchasing that ahead of time. Um, now let's hear from our world languages. This is Mr. Brown and Mrs. Scheidau. Uh, Senora Scheidel, como estas? Bonjour, Senor. Ça va? Oui, ça va. But actually, I'm not a Spanish teacher. My name is Mr. Brown, and I teach French classes at Avon Park High School. And I'm Senora Scheidel, and I teach Spanish. We also have Senora Apelans, who uh, teaches Spanish, and Senora Caballero. Or, I'm sorry, I think her name is Madame Caballero. Because she, she te teaches both. So you and I think many of the ninth graders know her. Yeah. The classes okay. I teach at Able Park High School, uh, or that are offered, the French classes offered at Able Park High School are French 2, typically for ninth graders, uh, French 3, typically for sophomores, French 4, typically for juniors, and French 5, typically for seniors. But also, the low department offers global sentiment studies that I teach, and that's open to pretty much anybody in the school. And uh, so, for Spanish, if you've never had any language before, not to worry, we do have Spanish one. Uh, Spanish two is typically our uh, freshman year, Spanish three for sophomores, Spanish four would be juniors and Spanish five for seniors. And um, Senora Apelans also teaches a South American studies class. 
And something that Chidel and I forgot to mention is that juniors or any student taking French or Spanish four or French or Spanish five can earn college credit. Um, so guys, that's six credits that you could leave high school with, right? Six college credits, that's a lot. And I think even French students can get um, eight, I think it's four through SUNY Albany, so they can get lots and lots of college credit that way. So we do fun stuff um, in class and outside of class. One of the things that is our favorite is the international potluck. And um, you guys have probably experienced that before because we combine with our middle school folks and make it a great community event. You bring your own bowl and spoon and the community comes together and um, enjoys a meal, uh, celebrating all the different cultures um, that we have within our community. Another fun thing we do, Spanish students do it and French students do it on separate days at the Cary Institute in Rensselaerville, New York. We have a, um, an immersion program where you go, oh, and students from Averill Park, Spanish students go speak Spanish all day long, and 10 students from Able Park French program go and they speak French all day long. And that's a free program for Able Park High School students. Oh, muy bien, senor, muy bien. Um, we also, uh, during the holiday season, participate in caroling. Um, so French students and Spanish students uh, learn carols in the language and entertain everybody. And Monsieur, I believe that you have a special chapeau that you uh, bring along with you. Yes, I do. I just share that with my students. Very nice, very nice. Um, let's see, in addition to singing Christmas carols later in the year, we do a lip sync contest. Our juniors and seniors participate in the lip sync. It's a great way to celebrate music and raise money for scholarship. And in the past, and um, well, we travel, our low students and low teachers at Avril Park High School travel. In the past, we've traveled as near as New York City, a combined trip with Spanish and French students as far as near as New York City. I've taken students to France, and I do have a trip scheduled for France this April. Ooh. <laughs> and Senora Epelant still has her trip on the schedule to Galapagos for next summer, summer 2021. So that's very exciting. That is a snapshot of what we do in the language department, that is language department specific. But um, I'm gonna talk to you just briefly as a mama. I am a mama of two 14 year old boys and we just went through ninth grade. And, um, it's really important if you want to be successful in anything to have a plan for organization and stick to it. And not everybody's plan is the same, but if your plan is, I got it right up here, that's not really a good plan. The more people you involve in your plan, you say, hey mom, I have this and this and this too, just as a check for yourself. You have a place to write these things down. You have, I am a paper plan book fan, um, but there are a million apps that you can get on your phone to help you stay organized, set reminders. But it's really important to have a plan um, so that you don't have to keep all that information up here because that is too stressful. Friends, we are here for you. We cannot wait to meet you in just a few weeks. Mr. Brown, any closing words? 
I'm looking forward to seeing all my teacher friends and all my student, all the new student friends and the ones who've been uh, returning who were there last year. So we're all really looking forward to being back at school as soon as we can with masks on. And so, see you soon. A lot of exciting things happening in the LOAT department. Let's hear from Mrs. Engel. She's our history, social studies department chair. Hi, and welcome class of 2024 to April Park High School. We're so excited and happy to see you guys this September. Um, I'm Mrs. Engel, I teach Global Nine, um, and Mr. Smith is the other Global Nine teacher. Here at April Park, you're gonna have four years of social studies. You're gonna have Global Nine, Global 10, US history and participation in government. Um, and economics in senior year. We also have exciting and fun electives at the high school for social studies. We have military history, psychology, sociology, criminal justice, and a current events class, if you're interested. Um, we look forward to seeing you and stop by room 305 anytime if you have questions. Have a great end of your summer. Thank you, Mrs. Engel. And here's a word from Mr. Goebel from our phys ed department. Hi, I'm Coach Goble, and I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about our high school physical education program. First and foremost, we need you guys to understand that we cannot wait to get you all back on campus. We've missed you all a ton and are really looking forward to getting back in here and start working with you guys come September. I'm one of the physical education teachers you'll meet here at the high school. In addition to teaching high school phys ed, I also coach football, indoor track, and outdoor track. The teachers you'll work with here in the high school are Coach Mendezi, who coaches bowling and is a class advisor. Coach Brooks, who's our baseball coach. And Coach Luskin, who coaches outdoor track and girls soccer. Our physical education program at the high school is a semester course. The goal of being more active is based on a three elective program. Those electives are team sports, lifetime activities, and strength and conditioning. We've got a ton of different things for you to do, both indoors and outdoors, in lifetime activities and team sports. And each class will have some input into the activities that they get to choose. Our strength and conditioning program is designed for both athletes and those who just want to get a good workout in. It's also designed for people of all different building levels. We all know things are going to be a little bit different here in the fall. The program I just described to you might be changed a little bit. Yes, you're going to have to do some work for physical education virtually. Yes, you'll also be here in front of us doing some of the activities that we talked about. No, you won't have to get changed. The bottom line is that we can't wait to get you guys here. Don't worry about a thing. We'll take care of you. We're all going to work together on this thing and make this program the best it can be so that you guys get to have a little fun, get with your friends, get a little bit more fit, and be active all together. Can't wait to see you all in the fall. Look forward to it. Thank you, Mr. Goebel. Here's Mrs. Bailey from our art department. Welcome class of 2024 to the Abel Park High School Art Department. I am Ms. Bailey, one of the three art teachers here at the high school, and our two other amazing art teachers are Mr. Klein and Ms. Gregory. Our Studio and Art Foundation course is the basic art course of significance that allows access to all the art classes that we have to offer at the high school. We offer media-based courses in a wide variety of artistic avenues, including strands in ceramics, sculpture, photography, painting and drawing, video art, and digital design. We now are offering four art classes for college credit, beginning photography, advanced ceramics, advanced painting and drawing, as well as advanced placement studio art. A few of our art electives are offered every other year. So in planning your art course selections, please keep in mind that our yearly art schedules do differ slightly from year to year. Think and plan ahead to maximize your art course selections. From day one in our art department, we begin building your art portfolio, which you will continue to build throughout your high school career. 
These portfolios are a visual record of your time, effort, and talents. Portfolios can be used in a variety of ways as you move toward whatever career path you decide to take. If you are planning to major in art at Averill Park High School, you will need to have five credits comprised of art classes and you will be noted as an art major at your high school graduation. We are truly excited to welcome you to our Averill Park High School Art Department, and we can't wait to see what creative ideas you can bring to our classrooms, our displays, and our yearly art exhibits. Welcome class of 2024. We can't wait to meet you in our world of art. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. All right, now from our tech mom, do you Technology Department, Mrs. Lambright. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Lambright. Welcome to my office. Hopefully all of us will be back at school here shortly. Um, so uh, that will be awesome. You get to see everybody to meet the incoming class in 2024. Um, so I'm one of the technology teachers at the high school. So it's my pleasure to welcome you all. Um, I'm here to give you uh, first just a quick summary of the courses that you might be taking um, as incoming freshmen. So you might be taking DDP, which is Design and Drawing for Production. It's a one-year course, uh, kind of a little summary of how to draw, um, how to do some 2D, 3D drawing. Also, uh, some introduction to CAD, uh, both 2D and 3D, depending on the time. Uh, we also have Fundamentals of Technology and Fundamentals of Construction, which are half-year courses which you can buddy up, um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I'll be telling that in a minute. Uh, we have Introduction to Engineering and Design, uh, which is a full year course, which is for Hudson Valley Credit. Uh, you also might be taking Intro to Game Design. It's a full year course. So, a little more detail. Let's see. Um, so we have like an engineering track, if you like the, that kind of thing. So uh, I am one of the engineering teachers. Uh, so as a freshman, take your Introduction to Engineering course. So it will teach you a lot of problem-solving skills. Um, that is, like I said, for Hudson Valley Credit, for your course. The big thing would be to learn how to do your 2D skills in AutoCAD, and then we'll do some 3D modeling in Autodesk and Venom. Um, so you'll have a lot of different projects. We do different, different kinds of things depending on the year. Um, we like to get in some reverse engineering. Um, you might even do products like reverse engineer Legos, Lego blocks, um, in Inventor, and then you can build them and put them together and do a lot of different things. Um, so that's really cool. What's neat is uh, we are able to, at Averill Park, offer seven different engineering courses, and some students fit all of them in, um, and you might be one of them, um, depending on how you build your uh, schedule for all of the years. Um, so um, another Hudson Valley course um, that you may choose is digital electronics, which you can take uh, as a 10th grader or 11th or 12th, depending on what works for you. Um, you can take uh, computer integrated manufacturing, civil engineering and architecture. You could also take CEA, which is civil engineering and architecture. I already said that. Um, POE, uh, you could take uh, CSP, which is computer science principles. Um, and then we also have as a senior, you could take the capstone course, which is um, engineering design and development, which you do an invention project. And we have a lot of really cool things you could do in the engineering track. Um, but we also have other options as well. So if you're interested in construction, um, you could take, as a ninth grader, you would be taking um, this kind of intro. You have the fundamentals of construction, and that's a half year course. Um, so in that, you get some fundamentals to kind of plan out what you want to make, um, learning your 2D and 3D sketching, reading and constructing architectural blueprints, and some intro to AutoCAD, okay? And then the other half of that, you could take then your intro to construction. And the intro to construction also works with your automotive stuff. Um, so let me back up a bit, though. Your construction um, is really cool. So in that, you'll learn all the different skills to actually make a house. So in the systems that go with it. Um, and then our construction, um, the intro to technology, uh, you'll need some drawing to scale, technical drawing and 2D, uh, 2D and 3D construction skills. They also have a lot of fun projects too for you. Um, they have a cardboard challenge and a fix it project along with some rockets and some catapults. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then with automotive stuff, well, 
our uh, automotive one and two classes, um, as 11th and 12th graders, you would um, get to learn everything about your cars that the uh, automotive industry would want to know to be able to diagnose and repair cars. So that is awesome. So in a nutshell, that is what our technology teachers through April Park would absolutely love to teach you. So if you have questions about what we have to offer you, it would be great if you go to our guide program planning. It's in the guidance section um, on the website. And if you look at all the course names, um, under those we have descriptions. With the course names that have colors, we have videos. So you can click that and check out videos with the kids doing all different kinds of stuff for some of the courses, all right? Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you and I hope to meet you uh, soon. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mrs. Lambray. All right, two more. Uh, we have Mrs. Yost from our library. Oh, hello. I'm Mrs. Yost. I'm your library media specialist here at Abel Park High School. I'm really excited to be working with you this year. <laughs> Did the cat get in there? Yep. Tails right there. Tails okay. Here's my cat. This is my dog. Um, <laughs> Please come see me in the library if you need a book for pleasure reading. I'm reading Good Omens right now. Alex Norton recommended this one to me. It's really awesome. Um, come to see me if you need help with your projects or research. I'm a research expert. Um, if you need some tech help, I'm always there for that. Uh, if you need a book for a class, I'm happy to help you. Whatever I can do, please let me know. I hope to see you during freshman orientation sessions in the library, too. Once again, this is Yost. So glad that we're going to be together in the fall. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, this is Mr. Plants, one of our guidance counselors. Hi, I'm Mr. Plants. I'm one of the four counselors here at the high school. I want to take an opportunity to welcome all of you to the high school from middle school. One of the things that we do here at the high school is to make sure you have an easy and smooth transition from middle school. Ways we do that are check your academic progress, meet with you to discuss any concerns that you may have, um, which means you may see us in your classrooms from time to time. You will also have an opportunity to meet your counselor at some point during the school year. I know we're in some difficult times right now. We, work, we will work out every situation that we can to make sure this is a very smooth transition and that you have an opportunity to discuss any concerns and make sure you have your ninth grade be a very positive and welcoming experience. Thank you have a great day. <laughs> so a lot to offer here at the high school, a lot of interesting, innovative classes, a lot of different um, avenues that you can pursue, art and music, CTE, technology, engineering. Um, so find your passion here. This is, we certainly have a lot of opportunities. Um, I believe one of the teachers mentioned the guide to program planning that's on the website. So you can always take a look at that to let, um, to see what classes are offered. Um, and uh, feel free to talk to your guidance counselor about things that you're interested in as you start to make your schedule for next year. So athletics um, is, um, Typically, these are our fall sports. Um, we know that the governor has uh, come out with that um, some of these sports are going to start to practice, but I have a message from our athletic director, Mr. Budniak. Uh, good afternoon, class of 2024. This is Mr. Budniak, director of athletics here at Avril Park. Uh, we're looking forward to having you on campus soon. In the meantime, just want to talk a little bit about athletics. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, full sports are scheduled to start on September 21st. Uh, at this time, we don't know exactly if all sports are going to run or if only some of them uh, will be running. So we'll have to get that information to you at a later date. But I know some of you are interested on when you are going to be able to sign up for sports. Uh, right now, we have not opened the registration process because we don't know exactly which sports uh, we're going to be offering this fall. We hope to know that by the end of the week, and the hope is to have registration open on Family ID 
uh, by Monday. That will only give you about a week to register, so make sure as soon as it opens up, uh, you get registered if you plan on playing a fall sport. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. So a lot of information on fall sports, just be looking, stay tuned for our emails and communication about that to make sure we get, if you want to play a fall sport to get signed up. I skipped one. <laughs> um, I wanted to just briefly talk about um, our extracurricular activities here at the high school. We have a number of clubs and activities that typically operate after school. This year at the at the, at the beginning of the school year, we are going to be starting with these activities being an all virtual um, as we won't be staying after school. Um, we will, there is a list of this, um, of clubs and activities on our website, along with the advisor that will be um, coordinating the efforts of those clubs. Uh, oh, the advisor should be reaching out to students to tell them how to get involved. If you have any questions about how to get involved, you should email the advisor directly. We have a ton of stuff to do. Um, horticulture club, we do a garden. We have, uh, if you're interested in music, we have a number of music clubs. We even have an angler club, which is fishing. We uh, do an odyssey of the mind. We have a lot of academic clubs. So lots of things to do to get involved and um, find your passion at, 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 at Avril Park. Let's keep skipping. All right, here we go. <laughs> so let's talk safety. I'm sure we're all pretty curious about um, this topic. Um, we're gonna start with the mask. So um, just like in public at, at the high school, we are gonna require that all students wear masks um, throughout the school day, um, with the exception of lunch, where they will take them off to eat. Um, if they're in an outside space uh, um, and they're socially distanced uh, in a phys ed or a PE class, that may be an opportunity to take off masks. I have a little video that uh, the, the community put together and we'll watch it about the proper way to wear masks. I wear a mask because it gives me another chance to show just how much I love Harry Potter. Just kidding. I mean, I do love Harry Potter, but I really wear a mask because scientists have shown that that is one of the best things I can do to help protect everyone I care about, including my students and their families. I wear a mask so we don't have to wear anything. I wear a mask because it's simple and it works. Hi, my name is Madison and I wear my mask to set a good example for people in my community. Hi, my name is Julie Foster. I'll be a senior this fall. With me, I have a bunch of the cool and colorful masks this year that I'll be wearing. And also with me, I have my favorite AP mask. I wear my mask to support the hospital nurses and doctors throughout the Catholic region. I wear a mask because I care about your safety. I wear a mask because I want school to start. I miss you all. Hello, my name is Matthew. Masks are very important right now because of the coronavirus. All you have to do to wear the mask is put the mask over your nose and mouth and then put the straps around your ears. The mask has to cover the nose and mouth. I wear a mask because the data and science shows that masks actually work to help slow the spread. Thank you. So that was some familiar faces from the middle school for you guys. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is uh, the student entry plan. So um, here's a map of the high school. This is an aerial map. Um, and we're gonna talk about the way students will be entered into the building. So as on the right, you'll see the blue arrows, that's our bus loop. So students that come to our school um, via the bus will be on the bus and the buses will take that loop around um, and drop students off. 
those students will be um, exiting the buses alternatively. Alternately, one bus will go to the gym entry and the next bus will go to the atrium entry. And they will drop off back and forth to allow the students have been uh, are into the building. If you plan on driving your student, um, you can see on the other side, the yellow arrows where the student drop off is. Um, you would enter Gettle Road, you would enter our junior parking lot and uh, pr proceed around that loop. You would drop your student off right there at the corner. And those students are gonna be entering the entry number four, which is our music entry. Students that drive themselves, which probably aren't any freshmen, but who will park in our front will actually enter through the main entrance. At every one of these entry points, students will have um, their temperature taken with our temporal scanners. Um, our aides, our monitors and administrators and aides will be at the building. Um, it's simple. There's gonna be some videos out, so keep stay tuned, but they just look into it. It takes your temperature very quickly um, and you may enter the building. If a student does have a temperature when they enter the building, they will be escorted to uh, our isolation room and their parents will be contacted to be have them picked up um, immediately. This year we're gonna have our building in zone. So this is a map of the high school. Oh, sorry, my lights go off if I sit still too long. Hold on one second. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> um, so this is the map of the high school. The upstairs is the blue zone. All that 600 numbers are the second floor of our building. Um, we have our building um, mapped in five different zones. Um, each zone is going to have a restroom that they need to use, a water filling station, and a hand washing station. So um, next to it, you can see all the facilities that are in each zone. Um, so when students leave a classroom for a pass, they'll be expected to stay within the zone that they're in. So if I am in the second floor, I need to stay in the second floor bathrooms and in the facilities. Um, we will be using these zones additionally to exit the building and we will be using our zones for fire drills. So instead of all of our students exiting the building at one time in a fire drill, we're going to be exiting the buildings per zone just to reduce the number of people that are together in one time. Um, same with the end of the bill, end of the day, we'll be dismissing five minutes early and we'll dismiss by zone to reduce the um, number of students in our hallways. Another change, or not change, but another thing we're uh, implementing is um, we're increasing our, uh, our norms. So, and to um, incorporate some of our safety um, initiatives. So, for example, in our classrooms, we're um, going to be maintaining six feet of separation between um, each desk. Um, students are, our desks in our, our high school will be staged where all desks in the room will person to person be six feet apart. Students will continue to wear masks in those rooms. Um, we're asking that people, um, one student will be left out of the uh, class at a time on a pass. When you leave your room to honor pass, you need to stay in the zone that which you are in. Um, we're asking that you bring all the materials you need. We're not gonna be sharing materials. Um, we're not gonna be sharing pencils or papers or, or so you're gonna be asked to bring your backpack and everything you need in your backpack. Um, and some other just classroom norms, um, we want you to be kind, uh, complete all assigned work, um, participate actively in class, even if you're virtual. So some students may be live streaming into the classroom. So we want people to stay, pay attention and be um, good digital citizens when they're in the virtual mode. Some of uh, the lunchroom norms that we have is, again, we'll be maintaining six feet of separation in the in the lunchroom. You can see behind you, I'm assigned in this picture, that's the setup of what the cafeteria will be looking like. Um, students will be asked to sit in spots de designated by a Warrior Safe, Warrior Strong sticker. Um, when you're seated in the cafeteria, you're gonna be able to remove your masks, obviously, because you wanna eat. Um, but if you stand up from your seat and you need to throw your garbage away or anything, you, we're following the stand up mask up protocol. Obviously, we're gonna follow all the directions of the supervising staff. Um, we're not gonna be moving around the cafeteria a lot. We really just need people to stay in their seats. We are going to be having maybe some outdoor seating. If we're allowed to have that, we're gonna be asking kids to, if they leave the building, that we're gonna have to sign in and sign out into the outdoor seating. And of course, as always, we want you to keep your area clean. We want you to throw your trash away. 
In the hallways, we're asking students to walk directly to their scheduled location. Um, in the past, we would have encouraged you to use the bathrooms during your, your time between classes. This is not the case. We would like you just get to get your class and get a pass from that class. There will only be one student in the bathrooms at any given time. So to manage that during the passing of classes, we've decided that we'll manage it from passes out of the classes. Um, we are will have, as you, in the grocery stores, we're gonna have arrows on the um, on the floor. We're gonna ask students to kind of keep to the right. When they can socially distance, they should. They need to keep their masks on over their nose and over their mouth. Um, we're asking you to move quickly and kind of get to your class on time um, and stay socially distanced when you can. In our bathrooms. So again, we're gonna ask people to use the bathroom in the designated zone. If you're in the blue zone, you need to be using a blue zone bathroom. Um, we will have a sign out, sign in sheet, um, which will be imperative that kids use. It's for contact tracing. Um, if students would like to use the bathrooms, they just need to request a class pass from their teacher and display it to any monitor staff out in the hallway. Um, again, we need to have our mask over our mouth and nose. And of course, you all know we can't use illicit substances in the bathroom, so no vaping or any other illicit stuff, which we should know. This is a new one, being a good digital citizen. So um, we ask that when you are on a Zoom call or in a Google Meet that you mute yourself when you're not speaking, that you find a quiet place to work and are mindful of what's happening around you so you don't have dogs barking and a lot of disruption. We ask that when you're in a, a Google Meet or you're live streaming into class that you would be dressed like you would be if you were in school. So refrain from pajamas or clothes that don't fit dress code and that you sit in the view of the camera. Um, we ask that you avoid using other distracting devices. Like if you're on a Google Meet, you probably shouldn't be on your phone texting your friends. We want students to stay active, participate, stay on the topic. Um, chat responsibly, so if you have a question, there's a, a chat box that you can raise your hand and kind of use those features so that you're not disruptive. Um, we encourage students to have their headphones uh, headphones in if they need them and your camera on. Um, every night, students should really get in the routine of plugging in their Chromebooks and charging them so you don't get into the middle of the class or middle of school day and now your device isn't charged. And if you're going to be attending a class virtually, we're asking to get there on time or a little early just to make sure that you're in and you can have some connection with the teacher. Some dates to remember. So here are a few upcoming dates that are important to you guys. So if you, most of our um, incoming ninth graders have Chromebooks, they had them from the middle school, but if you are from Gardner Dickinson or a new entry and do not have a Chromebook, we are having a Chromebook pickup September 2nd here at the high school from three to six. It will be out front, so you just need to pull up, you give your name, and we'll get your assigned Chromebook to you. Um, we are having a virtual student in-person meet and greet. A virtual student means students that are not planning on attending in-person at school at all. Um, we are having a meet and greet in our football field so that they may get their supplies for a class. So if they need books or um, Chromebooks or materials, if they're in art, this these items will be at this virtual meet and greet. Um, it will be from 6 to 7.30, and only students that are virtual should attend. Um, our open house, which was scheduled for sep September 17th, will be held in a virtual model, and that will be um, at 6.30. More details to follow about that. And then uh, get ready, because picture day is a coming, so that will be September 21st through the 24th. We are gonna offer some in-person student tours. Um, they will be September 8th. The tours will be every 15 minutes from 12 to six. Uh, if you wanna sign up for student tours, I'm going to be sending out an email to um, your student's email address. So their a Averill Park email address. It'll be a Google form and it will look like this. Um, all the time slots will be there. If there's a time slot that you want, it's not there. It's probably because 10 students have already signed up. They will disappear as time slots fill up. 
we're only allowing 10 students in at one time. And I'm sorry, but we're only allowing students just to keep the reduce the number. So parents will have to wait outside. It'll be 15 minutes and we'll be quick. Um, we do have some seniors, uh, Honor Society kids coming to give the tours. When you come for student tours, you'll need to wear your mask. But look for that email tomorrow. I'll be sending it out. All right. We're getting there. Franklin has questions. Uh, where do I get a school supply list? So at the high school, there is no school supply list except for that calculator. That would be a smart thing to get ahead of time. Um, students will get um, a syllabus at the beginning of or the first day of each of their classes. On that syllabus will be what they need. Typically, kids need pens, pencils, notebooks. Um, I just answered when we'll get a Chromebook. If you don't have a Chromebook, come to the Chromebook pickup. Can my child switch the day they come based on last name? At this time, we're not allowing anyone to switch their days. We have <laughs> counted the number of seats in every classroom, um, and it's just not feasible for us to have a lot of switching. So we know exactly who's coming on what day, and we have a number of seats for those students in those classes. So unfortunately, we just can't accommodate that request. Do I need to attend a, a study hall if I'm a virtual? So if you're in a hybrid, if you're here every other day and you have a study hall, you will not be required to attend. If you were virtual, you won't have study halls. And how can I see my schedule? Your schedules were released on school tools. So you just need to use your school tool username and password, and you can log on and get your schedules um, um, right now, they're there. The other thing I wanted to show you before we start our Q&A is our website. It's the link to our website. If you, if you go to our website, Go to Averill Park High School and scroll down. It says Family and Instructional Resources. This is a good place to go if you want to know a question and you want to know the answer. Um, they are building this website or we are building this website. So here's Family Resources. The leadership team, which would be myself, Mr. Keeles, and Mrs. Mean. Uh, instructional Resources, which will have all the students' teachers. Um, if you click here, it would say parent, student resources, everyone's Google Classroom will be here. Here's all the subject matters. So this is your go-to place for any questions you might have. Additionally, um, the leadership team will have a Google Classroom that we'll be posting things on. And this is our APHS YouTube channel. So for example, at the end of this night, uh, this recording will go into that YouTube channel. And so if people, you didn't get to see something in person or couldn't log on live, go there. There's some videos there. So that concludes what um, I, my presentation, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, in terms of the question and answer session of this, um, we just ask that you use the chat box. So the chat box is... Well, maybe I don't know where the chat box is. I thought it was Mr. Keeles, where's the chat box? Yeah, I can jump in, Mrs. Leach. Thank you. <laughs> the um the chat box is up in the top right hand corner of your screen. And if you hover over the top of the video section, you'll see a little part there that has uh, a little text box. It's at four now, five. So if you want to start to load any questions that you might have into that chat box, Mrs. Leach is gonna actually filter through them to make sure that we don't answer questions more than once. Um, and we'll work our way through that. We'll take about 10 or 15 minutes to do some questions. And then certainly we're going to be available via email um, and certainly by phone, you know, between now and opening. And we'll get to absolutely any questions you might have at some point before we open. So Mrs. Leach, I purposefully <laughs> so that I wasn't trying to look at too many things at once. Did I disengaged my chat box? So you let me know what you're seeing and what those questions are. And we're going to move through the questions and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. So it looks like they have a couple of a number of questions about how lunch works. How do they know when they're going to go to lunch? And oh, how sure. the works. Yep. Lunch is lunch is a little bit different, certainly at the high school. Um, actually, today on the um, the high school Facebook page and in um, our website. And also, we will email it out to you tomorrow. There is a high school lunch schedule. So essentially, it's a list of every course that runs during block three and during block seven. So you're going to look at your schedule. You're going to see what classes you have during block three and seven. Three is the lunch block on an A day. Seven is the lunch block on a B day. 
Then you're going to look at the lunch schedule and find that class. And it will tell you your lunch A or your lunch B or your lunch C or your lunch D. Okay. So again, you start with your schedule. You look at your block three class. You look at your block seven class. And then you take the lunch schedule, which we just released just today. So it's going to be either on our Facebook page for the district. You'll see it there. And tomorrow we'll have it emailed out to everyone as well. And you take a look and you see. Um, keep in mind that if you're totally new to the high school, this won't make a difference if you've had students who have gone through before. Um, this year, we um, are going to have three different lunch locations. So when you look to see when your lunch is, it will also tell you which location you are assigned to eat lunch in. Again, that's something we need to do to ensure the number of students in any given location is below the capacity that we have to maintain for CDC guidelines. So the next question is um, uh, A through K go on blue numbered days. Yes, that's correct. A through K goes on blue number days. And when should we be in school if we're being dropped off by a parent? And I'm going to give you another one and you can answer it. And are we going to use our lockers? <laughs> okay. Um, if you are being driven to school, we're asking that no one be dropped off to the building prior to 720. Um, at 720, we will have an adequate amount of supervision available to make sure that we can take care of everybody's well-being. So again, if your student gets driven to school, 720 would be the earliest that we would hope that you would be able to, uh, to make that drop off. When you arrive in the morning, um, you will go through um, the temporal scanning process in our main entrance uh, because you'll be coming in the front of the building and you'll report directly to our cafeteria. Um, breakfast will be available there, you know, each morning, just like it typically would be. Um, and like Mrs. Leach said before, there'll be tons of signage that shows you how to appropriately sit yourselves in locations that maintain social distancing. So cafeteria is available in the morning if you are a little bit earlier. The earlier that we, the earliest that we'd like to see you come in would be 720. Mrs. Leach, there was a second part to that. It was what? It was lockers. Okay, we're not going to be using lockers at the high school, um, both in the middle school and at the high school, um, lockers will not be used. Um, so students will be carrying your backpack um, with you. You'll be bringing your items from class to class um, throughout the course of the day. Uh, this is something, again, that we're doing um, per CDC guidelines and in order to maintain the cleanliness of those spaces. But I'll also be transparent that we've had to take a lot out of our classrooms to make them uh, locations that can be effectively disinfected. So all of the things that we've taken out of classrooms to kind of strip them down to the bare are actually all stored in the lockers. So it's a little bit of a, an of a, of a efficiency and the CDC sort of process. So the next question is, how do you recommend students best organize their materials? Well, I think the nicest transition that you're going to have is uh, coming into the high school is that you're going to have gone from from periods, which you may have had, you know, nine different classes a day to blocks, which means really you're going to come to school and have only four classes a day. So I think what you really should probably do is organize yourself around little little blocks of, of four. You know, you're going to be getting yourself ready for four classes that you have on one day, and then you'll have four classes on the next day. Um, as incoming ninth graders who I think have been digitally savvy with one-to-one -one devices for quite a while, I am also a recommender of using your Google Calendar and using the resources in your Google Suite to keep yourself organized. Um, I could not get through even an hour of a typical day without my Google reminders, to-do lists, organization topics. So use that technology to help keep you organized. And remember that each day is essentially a snapshot of only four classes at a time. Also, I want to make a plug for this. We communicate heavily with our students through email. So students should be checking their school email on a very regular basis, at least every day. I reach out to students frequently via email. I reach out to parents frequently via email. Um, again, that's one of the primary mechanisms that we reach out to folks by. So the next question is, in the hybrid model, how does the virtual day work? Log in, at, the question is, do we log in the first block? Yes, so what will happen on your virtual day is that you'll still attend all of the classes that are on your schedule, but you're going to attend them remotely. Each of your teachers, so on the first day, 
you're going to log right in. Okay, you're going to log into the Google Classrooms that have been sent to you by your teachers. Each of your teachers is going to be managing that virtual instruction in a variety of different ways. Many of our teachers will be having you live stream right into their classroom, so you'll participate live with the students who are on site on that given day. Other teachers will be asking for you to check in at the beginning of the block so that they can share what you need to do over the next 80 minutes. And then maybe they might ask for you to check back in at the end of the block. Um, some teachers may also have days where they say, okay, during the time that you have class with me, you need to complete the following task and it needs to be electronically submitted to me and time stamped before the end of that block. So the idea here is that you're going to have new instruction and engagement with every teacher every day, regardless of whether you are virtual or remote. And I wanna throw in there, part of this whole deal is we take attendance for every student every day, regardless of your whether you're remote or in person. So even on your remote days, your attendance will be taken in each of your classes. So the next question is, on the first day of school, which would be September 9th, if you're virtual, how do you connect? So the first step is to make sure that you have a device. So if you're a person who does not have a device, you wanna make sure that you attend the device pickup. The second is that during our professional development days, which are September 1st, 2nd, and 8th, we'll be asking for each of our teachers to reach out to their virtual students with directions for how to connect on the first day. So I want for, this is where you immediately need to make sure that you're checking in on your email. We will send out a ton of reminders via social media, the website, email, but it's important that you're checking your email because we'll be asking for teachers to connect with you during one of those three days before our opening for students, and they will give you directions as to what they need you to do for that first week. This, um, the next question is um, bus numbers. Where do they find their bus numbers and are we still transferring um, at Algonquin? Second one is actually easier. You're not gonna, tr we're not doing any transfer buses anymore. So the full fleet will be running from, from beginning to end. Um, the second part I'm trying to remember because we talked about it at a leadership meeting this morning and it was super brand new news. If I remember correctly, we're going to be sending out an email um, in the beginning part of next week to let you know that bus numbers have been posted. So keep an eye on social media, keep an eye on your email. We expect that by the beginning part of next week, we'll be able to send out bus numbers. No, tran no transfers, just one bus. The next question is about devices. So if they have their own devices, like a MacBook or a different kind of Apple product, are they allowed to use that instead of a Chromebook? <sighs> Technically, I guess from your home network, you can use any device that you'd like to. Um, here inside the building, our tech department is not going to be able to support your individual devices. So will you have access? You will. Will it be as fast? It won't because it will be on a guest network instead of our internal network. So your internet reliability and your connectivity will not be secure and will not be um, super up to speed. So my recommendation would be that you use the devices that we're issuing as your primary devices, especially on the days that you're here in the building. Um, because again, the network for the guest devices is not as strong and the bandwidth is not as uh, reliable. From home, I'm not sure it matters. I use my own personal device at home to do remote work all the time, and I don't see a difference in productivity. Google, completely web-based, so it really doesn't matter what you're working off of. In the building, you should bring your Chromebook, though. So the next question is about, um, I'm sorry. You're um, fine. There's <laughs> email. There's a lot of over here. A uh, school email. So, and I'm going to answer this. Um, you were sent, um, if you're a new student, you were sent your username and password. If you have that, you would just log on to a Google. You use that, uh, the Google account, go to Google, say log in, put your login, your, your, your APCSD um, email, and then the password is your lunch pin twice. If you can't do that, please call our guidance office. We'll help you get it set up. The next question, Mr. Keeley's, is about when are they going to get their schedules? If they don't, if they didn't get onto school tool, are we mailing them? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So they are available during school tool. 
um, or on school tool. They've been there since the beginning of this week, I think. But um, that said, yesterday we paper mailed a copy of everyone's schedule to their home. So I would expect that for everybody living in Averill Park in the surrounding towns, you're going to be getting those in the mail paper version either today, tomorrow, or the next day at the latest. Also, when you get that envelope, it'll have your schedule. It'll have our bell schedules. It will have that day rotation calendar that Mrs. Leach showed you. And it will have your Chromebook agreement form, which is a form that everybody should sign indicating that you're receiving a device from the district. And it says it right in the letter that comes with the schedule. So you'll see it. Um, we're asking that you return that to your advisory by Friday, September 11th. So a bunch of things are coming in the mail. That includes the schedule. Um, are we going to be able to stay after with teachers and take the late bus? So in the beginning of the school year for the first phase of our reopening, uh, we will not have late buses and we will not have after school. So our dismissal at 210 will be a dismissal for all of our students across the board. Um, we are going to continue to assess that as we move deeper into the school year. So certainly, um, for example, if athletics becomes something that are going to happen with more consistency as we move deeper into September, we concurrently will make sure that we are kind of opening things up after school for other extracurricular activities and events. And that would then, of course, lead to reassessing the late buses. Um, but for the initial period of opening, we will not have after school and we will not have late buses. We are gonna focus on getting, getting it right with our academic day first and we'll expand from there. Um, there are some questions about the lunch. Are we gonna be able to sit with our friends? I'm going to be very transparent on that one too, Mrs. Leach. Our, our plan as of today is that, yes, you will be able to sit with friends uh, as long as you're maintaining social distance. Um, and as long as the friends who you are referring to are assigned to the same eating space as you are. Um, keep in mind, every class section is assigned to a specific eating space in the building so that we can maintain numbers that are appropriate to that space. Um, there'll also be an opportunity to sign out of our indoor spaces, and we will have one or two outside spaces with tents available. So students will be able to eat outside, get some fresh air. This is an opportunity for us to uh, take a break from masks and kind of get some fresh air. The reason I said I need to be transparent is because just literally five hours ago, um, the Department of Health met with the district and we had some serious discussions around the topic of contact tracing and making sure that we're able to appropriately contact trace should we need to do that. So one thing that's being discussed at levels much higher than, than us right now is whether or not we need to assign seating in lunches. So it's not our intention to do that at this moment, but we may at some point need to respond to some regulatory changes that would mean that we had to assign seats. So we'd keep people up to date on that as we get more information. This is a great question, which I didn't cover. If a parent is gonna pick up their student at the end of the day, where do they pick up their student? Hmm. So at the end of the day, you pick up your student in the same loop that you dropped your student off in the morning. So it's essentially a big giant circle. It's a one-way traffic loop. Um, and you can come right through and pick them up right there in the afternoon, just where you left them in the morning. And because we are starting school later than normal, are we ending school later than normal? The calendar, I think, is the question. Well, we, we are starting school later this year just by the natural um, effect of having a later Labor Day. So our school calendar is still 180 days of instruction. Um, so it's really a typical year. It's just shifted. So I guess the simple answer is we did start a little bit later just because of Labor Day. We still have 180 days of instruction and we still have a graduation on, I think it's June 26th. So it's really the same parameters as typical. All right, we have two more questions. So uh, the first question is, if they forget their masks, will we have masks available to them? Absolutely, yes. It will be a complete non-negotiable that all students and staff will wear masks while they're in this building. Um, so if a student did forget their mask, we will absolutely make sure that we have a mask for you. No question. Okay, and the last question, and I, there seems to be a lot of questions about busing, and I'm not sure that we have exactly the answers you guys are looking for. The bus information is going to come. They will tell you what time to be out at your bus, that kind of thing. But the last question that I know Mr. Keeley is, is going to like is how will we build community and school spirit? <laughs> yeah, no, that's very important. Absolutely. 
Um, yes. We've been talking a great deal about uh, making sure that we do a couple of different things to help to do that. Um, the first is we have our daily advisory period. So I know that we didn't get a chance to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, that's kind of similar to, I think, what Algonquin calls the morning meeting. It's a time when we kind of inst stop instruction, but for us, it's in the middle of the day. Um, it's an opportunity for our teachers to check in with our students, for our students to have a little bit of downtime. Once the year gets rolling and we know that we're operating safely, that also becomes a time when right in the school day, we can engage in extracurricular activities. Um, we have people doing yoga, we have people playing basketball, we have people just kind of doing all different things around the building to kind of wind down a little bit. The other piece is that um, we're really working with our teachers to make sure that we build connections between the two cohorts because even though we have one group of students attending one day and another group of students attending the next, we really wanna make sure that we're connecting those two groups so that we continue to be one school, even though we're kind of attending at different times. Um, a big thing that will be coming up in the beginning of the year is homecoming week. Um, I do not yet know what that's going to look like, but I know that our class advisors are really kind of uh, chomping at the bit to put together all kinds of virtual spirit events that we can do as a school throughout the course of that week. So that's something we are going to be continuing to work on. It is super important. We want to maintain a strong sense of community. And uh, as we continue to move through the year, we're going to discover new ways to do that together. Think about what the class of 2020 discovered over the course of last spring in terms of all the neat, new, innovative sorts of things you can do to celebrate a class, even when we're not together. So we'll be working on those things as we move into the fall. And I think that's it. If you guys have more questions, though, we obviously are here. You can shoot us an email um, here at the high school. You can give us a call. Um, our, we're back here, and we're happy to answer anything. Um, I just want to thank you for taking the time with us tonight. I know I ran over a little hour. <laughs> I apologize. I wanted to keep it to an hour. Um, and I can't wait to meet you guys all virtually or in person or anyway. So thank yep. you so much. Guys, it was a great pleasure. We'll see you very, very soon. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Take care. <laughs> Thank you.